Howdy folks, uh, this is Mr. Ryan, and this is Lesson 2-1 for ninth grade math. And what we're going to do here is just sort of a little preview of analytic geometry. So um, in Lesson 2-1, what, what we're basically doing is identifying slopes of lines. So you're given a, um, a, a shape, some kind of geometric shape on the coordinate plane, and uh, in addition, to um, having the shape, there are also points at all the vertices. So like, the, let's say this is point A, that this is point B, this may be point C, and this may be point D, okay? So we have this geometric shape with points uh, labeled at the vertices. And what we're being asked here is, what is the slope of one of those line segments? What is the slope? of, for example, line segment AD, line segment AD, okay, so this is line segment AD, this line, red, this line that, line segment that runs between A and D, and we want to know the slope. Well, how do we know that it can have a slope? Well, because it's on the coordinate plane, so it is, it is a line on the coordinate plane, and therefore it has a slope, okay? Uh, and so the way we're going to do this, I'm going to give you some steps. Um, you write the steps down, but I'm going to erase them after I write them. The first step we're going to do to be able to do this is we're going to uh, identify uh, the coordinates of the two points, of A and D. So identify the coordinates of A and D. Now, it might not always be A and D. D. It might be, you know, W and X or, or some other um, points, okay? So let's go ahead and identify the coordinates of A and D. Uh, point A here is at the coordinates 6, 9. Okay, so the X coordinate is 6, the Y coordinate is 9, and then point D is at the point 4, 5. So X is 4, Y is 5, okay? All right, so we have identified the uh, coordinates of A and D. So that's step one. All right, and now what we want to do is, uh, going on to step two, one of the things that you want to do is you want to sort of, in your mind, you want to consider that these coordinates, like that, we're going to call 6, X1, and we're going to call 9, Y1. And then for D, we're going to call for the 4, the X coordinate, X2, and we're going to call the 5, Y coordinate, Y2. So we have X1 and Y1 over here, and we have X2 and Y2 over here. Why are we doing that? Okay, well, because we're going to use the slope formula, okay, which is, you know, Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. And remember that the Y values always go in the numerator and the X values always go in the denominator, okay? Don't mix that up. That can really mess you up, okay? Um, so this is the formula that we're going to use. And so uh, step two now is going to be um, uh, set up the slope formula, which we have right here. Set up the slope formula with uh, the y values and the x values. Oops, and x values from the two points, from the two points that where we identified the coordinates. Okay. All right. All right. So that's what we're going to do. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to I'm going to say m, and then I'm going to put a little sub a d. So that means the slope. M means slope of AD is equal to. Okay, so we're about to do that. Go ahead and erase this stuff here. Now, if you didn't write that step down, then you need to rewind this video. You need to go back. You need to write down that second step. Okay. All right. So, um, so we're going to put Y2 here. And in this case, Y2 is 5. And then minus Y1. And in this case, Y1 is 9. Uh, x then over x2 and x2 is 4 minus uh, x1 is 6. So we have 5 minus 9 
over 4 minus 6. Okay, and now step 3 is going to be um, evaluate, I mean, that means subtract. Okay, evaluate uh, the numerator, okay, which is going to be 5 minus 9, and the denominator, right? So we need to evaluate. To evaluate means to do add addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and other stuff. Evaluate just means to do your operations. So to evaluate the, the numerator means to do 5 minus 9. 5 minus 9 is negative 4. And now we're going to evaluate the denominator. 4 minus 6, that's negative 2. Okay, so that's step 3. Now step 4, the last step, you're going to reduce. Now do not use a calculator to do this. You're not reducing using a calculator. We don't want a decimal value. Now this in this case, if you did use a calculator, you'd get the correct answer because it's a whole number. Okay, uh, but reduce the fraction if necessary. Sometimes after doing step three, uh, the fraction can't be reduced. So that means it's your final answer. Reduce the fraction if necessary. Okay, And in this case, it is necessary. Okay, Sometimes reducing the fraction means canceling negatives. If you have a negative in the numerator and the denominator, we know a negative divided by a negative is a positive. Okay, And so here, negative 4 divided by negative 2 is positive 2. And therefore, the slope of AD here, the slope we're going to say is M equals 2. Okay, So the slope of the line segment AD is 2. Okay, um, All right, so now let's do a couple more. That's, that's basically the end of the procedure. That's everything that you're learning how to do. And so now what we're going to do is we're just going to do a, a bunch of practice here. Okay, So let's go ahead and erase. And what I want to do now is I want to identify, uh, oops, excuse me, what, okay, what is the slope of another line segment here, All right? Let's identify what is the slope of um, BC, line segment BC, okay? All right, well, the first thing we want to do is identify the coordinates of B and of C. Uh, B is at 12. 6. Okay. So we'll do 12 comma 6. And then the coordinates of C is 10 and 2. So C is 10 and 2. And we'll go ahead and call uh, B, we'll call this x1 and y1. This will be x1 and y1. This will be x2 and y2. So the 2 is y2. The 10 is x2. The 6 is y1, and the 12 is x1, okay? Uh, so let's see here. Um, so we're going to do, uh, now we're going to use do m, the slope, m of b, c is going to be equal to, um, we're going to do y2, which is 2, minus y1, which is 6, over x2, which is 10, minus x1, which is 12. Okay. Now it's important to notice that these two numbers, the numbers that are that are that come second in the numerator and the denominator, they both come from the same coordinate, 12, 6. Okay. You can't put the 2 here and then the 10 over here and then the 6 here and the 12 over here. You, you can't do that. You have to have the two coordinates that, that belong together right on top of each other. So 10, comma 2 is over here, and so we have that one first, okay? All right, and that's going to equal, and now what we're going to do is evaluate the numerator, 2 minus 6, that's negative 4. Evaluate the denominator, 10 minus 12, that's negative 2. And then step 4, reduce the fraction. Negative 4 divided by negative 2 is positive 2. And so this slope over here is m equals 2. Now you may be thinking, that's interesting, that this one, uh, a line segment AD has a slope of 2, and line segment BC also has a slope of 2. Well, that's meaningful in math. When you have two lines that have the same slope, 
that means that those lines are parallel. And so this line, and when we have parallel lines, oftentimes we put like either a single arrowhead or a double arrowhead uh, on the two lines. And this arrowhead with this arrowhead means that this line and this line are parallel, okay? Another way we can write that is we'll say line segment AD, and then we'll do these two vertical lines in between, is parallel to line segment BC. Why are they parallel? Because they have the same slope. Same slope means parallel, okay? All right, uh, so now let's, uh, let's do another one, okay? All right, so we'll erase this. We've got the answer to um, line segment BC. And now let's do, well, what's, what is the slope? Okay, what is the slope? of, let's now say this one, line segment AB. Let's try to get this one. What's the slope of line segment AB? Okay. All right. Well, we already have the coordinates up here, so we can just bring those down. Uh, so step one is identify the coordinates of A, which is 6, 9. Okay. 6, 9. And then we need the coordinates of B, and the coordinates of B are 12, 6. And now we're going to identify them as x1 and y1. Okay, so let's call 6 x1 and call y or 9 y1. Now, I'm about to call this one x2 and y2. And you may be thinking, yeah, but up here, B, uh, the 12, 6 was x1 and y1. It really doesn't matter. It's arbitrary. You can pick any of the x values to be x1 and then the one that goes with it is automatically y1. So we can choose for the 12 in b to be x2, and, and then the 6 is y2. That's okay. You can do it. Okay. All right, and then uh, step two, we're going to set up our slope. m of the slope of a, b, okay, is equal to, we're going to do y2, 6, is y2, 6, minus y1, which is 9, nine divided by, x2, 12, here, 12, minus x1, which is 6, put that here, okay, and then 6 minus 9, that's um, negative 3, okay, and then uh, 12 minus 6, that's 6, and now that's step 3. Now step 4, we're going to reduce the fraction. Well, 3 and 6 are both divisible by 3, so 3 divided by, well, negative 3 divided by 3 is negative 1, and 6 divided by 3 is 2. And so now we've reduced it, and our slope is negative 1 half, okay? And you can see that this line is downward sloping, uh, and so it has a negative slope, okay? Uh, these Both of these lines are upward sloping. But from the left to the right, they're going uphill. This one's going downhill, and that's why it has a negative slope, okay? And so we're going to say here, m is equal to negative oops, negative one half. Okay. And now let's do one more. Let's do the slope of um, of C D. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to say what is the slope of line segment C D? Slope of line segment C D. Okay. And so C, so step one, identify the coordinates. Okay, C D. C is 10, 2, 10, comma 2. D is 4 and 5. Okay, 4, 5. And now uh, step two, we're going to set up our slope formula, the slope of C D. Okay. Uh, so uh, we're going to do, oh, we didn't identify this one. We're going to call this one x1 and this one y1. And this one's going to be x2 and this one's going to be y2. Okay. And so we're going to do y2, which is 5, minus y1, which is 2, divided by uh, x2, which is 4, minus x1, which is 10. Now we're going to evaluate the numerator. 5 minus 2 is 3. Evaluate the denominator. 4 minus 10 is uh, negative six, sorry, and then reduce. Remember, when there's a negative, we don't put it on the bottom. We put it either on the numerator or we put it on the front. So let's just put it on the front. 
because we have a positive divided by a negative, and that makes it a negative. The whole thing is a negative. So negative, and then 3 and 6 are both divisible by 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1, and 6 divided by 3 is 2. And once again, we get a slope of negative 1 half. So we have this downward sloping line here, and it has a slope of negative 1 half. And note that this slope here is the same as this slope here. And that means that AB and DC are both, uh, or CD, are both parallel. So what we're going to do is we're going to put double arrow in this one. Double arrow, and the double arrow means that those two lines are parallel. So what we have is we have opposite sides here that are parallel, and then here we have opposite sides that are parallel. And when you have a four-sided figure that has opposite sides that are all parallel, we call that a parallelogram. So this, this is actually a parallel, it's called a parallelogram. We'll talk about that later in, in the next school year. Okay. This is a parallelogram. That doesn't matter for this particular lesson. I'm just pointing it out to you. All you need to do in this particular lesson is just be able to identify the slopes of all of, all of the sides of whatever shape is given you. Okay. All right. Let's do another example. Okay. So here we have another um, quadrilateral, a four-sided figure on the coordinate plane. It's made up of four lines, and because they are lines on the coordinate plane, they have slope, okay? Uh, the points, this um, four-sided figure is called J, K, L, M, okay? And so we want to identify the slope of J, K, then K, L, then L, M, and then J, M. Okay, so this one, then this one, then this one, and then this one. We're going to identify four slopes, okay? So uh, let's follow through on our steps. The first thing we're going to do here is identify the coordinates of J and then K. J, this point, is at 2, 7. Okay, so we're going to put here 2, comma, 7. K is at this point. It's at 12 and 13. And let's call 2, we'll call that x1, y1, and then x2 and y2, okay? And so we're going to set up our slope. Our slope is going to be the slope of j, k, and that's going to be uh, y2 is in the numerator, so that's 13, minus y1 from the other one, which is 7, divided by x2, which is 12, minus x1, which is 2, and now we're going to evaluate the numerator, 13 minus 7, well, that's 6. And then 12 minus 2, well, that's 10, that's the denominator. And so uh, 6 divided by 10, this can be reduced. 6 and 10 are both divisible by 2. And if we divided by 2, we would get 3 over 5. And therefore, that's the answer. The slope of the line JK is 3 fifths. So JK has a slope of 3 fifths. Okay. Now let's do KL. Well, we already have point K. Point K is 12, 13. Now let's identify point L here. That's 15 and 8. So 15 comma 8. Okay, great. Now step two, we're going to set up our slope formula. So the slope M of KL is Y2. Oh, we didn't identify. This is going to be X1 this is going to be y1, this is going to be x2, and this is going to be y2. So y2 is 8 minus y1 is 13 over uh, x2 is 15 minus y, or x1, which is 12. And so we get 8 minus 13, that's negative 5. And evaluate the denominator, 15 minus 12, that's 3. Uh, and then we have negative 5 over 3. This cannot be reduced. So, so this is actually done, and we have the negative in the numerator, so we're done. Uh, and so the slope of KL is negative 5 over 3. So M is equal to negative, oops, negative 5 over 3. So the slope of this line is negative 5 over 3. Now I want to point something out here. Do you see how this is 3 over 5, and this is negative 5 over 3? Whenever you have slopes where... Um, you flip it over, so this is three-fifths, but if you flip it over, it's five-thirds, and then if one of them is negative, and we call this the 
negative reciprocal. The negative reciprocal. Okay. Reciprocal means flipped upside down. The reciprocal of three-fifths is five-thirds. The negative reciprocal is where you flip it over and then change the sign. So three-fifths flipped over is five-thirds, and then we change the sign to negative, okay? And here's the thing. In, uh, when you have two lines where their slopes are negative reciprocal, those two lines are actually perpendicular. They create a 90-degree angle. So negative reciprocal uh, slopes are perpendicular. Perpendicular. Okay. And so the way we write that would go like this. We would say that J line segment JK is, and we would do a vertical line and then a horizontal line. That's the perpendicular symbol. Okay. Is perpendicular to K L. Okay. Uh, and so now let's move on to what's the slope of LM. That's this line right here. Well, we already know L is 15, 8. We already know that M, oh no, we don't know M yet. M is 5, 2. 5, 2. And then we'll call this one X2, and we'll call this one Y2. We'll call this one X1, and we'll call this one Y1. Okay. And so we're going to set up our slope, M, the slope of LM is going to be y2, which is 2, minus uh, y1, which is 8, over x2, which is 5, minus x1, which is 15. And now evaluate the numerator. 2 minus 8 is negative 6. 5 minus 15 is negative 10. Now we can reduce. Negative divided by negative is a positive. 6 can be divided by 2, and 10 can be divided by 2. And so we wind up with 3 over 5, 3 fifths. So the slope of LM is 3 fifths. So the slope here, M, is 3 fifths. And look, that's the same as JK, is also 3 fifths. And since this is 3 fifths and this is negative 5 thirds, that's a negative reciprocal, okay? Uh, so that means that this is a 90 degree angle and this is parallel to this, okay? And what that means is, since we have two 90 degree angles here, okay, and that these two are parallel, um, that means that, uh, that you know, well, it has to do with transversals. I, I won't get into it now, okay? Let's do this last one, J, M, okay? J is uh, two, seven, M is five, two, We'll call this one X1 and Y1. We'll call this one X2 and Y2. And then our slope, M, the slope of J, M, is going to be uh, Y2, which is 2, minus Y1, which is 7, over X2, which is 5, minus Y2, or X2, or, excuse me, minus X1, which is 2. Okay, so this is y2 minus y1, this is x2 minus x1, okay? 2 minus 7 uh, is negative 5, 5 minus 2 is 3, and this can't be reduced, and we have the negative in the numerator, so that's it, we're done. That means that the slope of jm is negative 5 thirds, which is a negative reciprocal of three-fifths, both of these, that means this is a 90-degree angle, and this is a 90-degree angle, and since the slope here, negative five-thirds, is the same as over here, negative five-thirds, we have parallel lines again, just like we did in the last example. And now, here's what I have to say. Because the opposite sides are parallel and we have four 90-degree angles, that makes this shape a rectangle, okay? And so this, we just proved that this is a rectangle, okay? And that's one of the things that we, we want to do, that we like to do in analytic geometry. But we're using, we're in, we're in algebra right now. We're just learning the skills to be able to identify rectangles in um, analytic geometry, okay?
All right, well, that's it for this lesson. Uh, really, all you're doing is on a bunch of questions, you're just going to identify the slopes of the sine sides. You do not have to identify the perpendicular or the parallel lines, but if you want to notice it, you should, okay? All right, I will see you in the next lesson.